even an experienced jelly maker can have problems. One of two things can happen. Your jelly gets too stiff or your jelly is too thin. And today we're going to look at what you can do when you run into that kind of a situation. Here's an example of jelly that is simply too stiff. It's holding the shape of the jar. In fact, when I dumped it out, I simply turned it upside down. It comes out. It never mellows out. It never melts away. And if that happens to you, you're stuck. You really can't do anything to fix it. It's going to stay that way forever. On the other hand, this is jelly that's a little too thin. And you can see when that one comes out, it starts to, to melt away too much. And we do have something we can do for that kind of jelly. First of all, uh, if you want to leave it like that, you, th neither one of these means you, you need to throw them away. The very stiff one, you can heat up a little bit, it'll soften up, you can continue to use it, or you can put it on very hot biscuits and it'll melt away and you can spread it anyway. So either one can be used, but the very soft one we can do something about. Now, what happened to make that? First of all, overcooking the, the fruit when you're making the juice, not measuring correctly, uh, getting too much of uh, uh, the sugar or too much of the pectin. What I'm going to do here is uh, start some the ingredients that we're going to need to uh, make this jelly better. Now, this particular one I made with powdered pectin. And if you make it with powdered pectin, your remake involves powdered pectin, and that's what I'm doing today. If you made it originally with liquid pectin, you've got to use liquid pectin in the fix, and that process is a little bit different. The directions for either one will be on the website. So I've got a half a cup uh, for every quart. You're only going to work with one quart at a time of your this too soft jelly. I've got uh, a half a cup of water, a fourth of a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice, and four teaspoons, just four teaspoons, which is not anywhere near the full amount of powdered pectin that comes in a package. We're going to stir those together, overheat, and bring them to a boil. And then we're going to add the jelly to that as soon as it gets to a full boil. Now, one of the biggest reasons that the jelly gets undercooked in the first place or, or gets soft is undercooking. And that's because people don't know how to determine what is a boil. So uh, a boil, they ask for a full rolling boil, which means it's, it's going so much that you can't make it stop boiling while you're stirring. Even if no matter how fast you stir, if you really wanted to make it stop boiling, you, you have to, to, uh, to take it off the heat. The other reason is that the pan is, is simply too small. It may be too tall and narrow so that you don't get evaporation quickly. This one's going very nicely, so we're going to add one quart of our too soft jelly to that. And we're going to bring that back to a boil while we're stirring constantly, and we're going to boil it hard for exactly 30 seconds. Your timer has to be very precise. Use the second hand on your watch if you're not sure of your timer. Test your timer ahead of time to make sure that it's accurate. You can see we've got a rolling boil here, and this is going to go for 30 seconds. Now, if we had doubled our recipe when we were originally making the jelly, then the, the probability of it uh, overcooking would have also doubled uh, because the surface area would have been too small for the amount of uh, evaporation to take place that we'd need. After that 30 seconds, immediately remove it from the heat and uh, set it aside. That's real important if you're using an electric burner in particular because it's going to hold the heat a lot longer. Now you'll see that there's some foam that's collected on the top, just like there is when you're doing regular jelly. And what you'd want to do at that point is, is stop here and take a moment to use a metal spoon and skim the foam off the top. Otherwise, that's going to sit inside the jelly. It's not that it's bad to be there. It just makes the jelly look less attractive. Ladle the jelly into your jelly jars. Now, these jars need to be sterilized, so you're going to put them in boiling water, either in your uh, water bath canner, since you're going to need it in just a minute anyway, and bring them to a boil and let them boil for at least 10 minutes inside the, the water bath canner. That's important because the jars are not going to be in the canner long enough for the sterilization to occur as they're in the canner later on. Jelly needs to be filled to the 1 4th inch mark, we're going to get a flat ready, and then you're going to clean the edge of the rim with a damp paper towel just to make sure that there's nothing left on that rim. Put on the flat, put on the lid and tighten it down. And 
do all of your jars in as, as quickly as you can. Then they're going to go in the water bath canner because we need to make sure that we evap have the air that's trapped inside the jar at the top right now uh, evacuated from the jar. So they go in the water bath canner. If you're at a thousand feet or less altitude, it's five minutes. If you're above that altitude in Oklahoma, you need to put them in a water bath canner for 10 minutes. Begin counting your time as soon as the, wa the water in the water bath comes back to a boil. Remember, the water needs to be one to two inches above the top of the jars uh, when you get the jars in the canner for this process to work correctly. It's always good to have your jelly work out well the first time, but it's also good to know that if it is too soft, it doesn't mean you have to have pancake syrup for the rest of the year. You can remake the jelly and have it on toast like you had originally planned. For Oklahoma Gardening, this is Barbara Brown.